Today we're going to talk briefly about Fold3, an Ancestry.com website. Fold3 is a premier collection of original military records, nearly 5 million strong. Its primary purpose is to provide access to those military records, including the stories, photos, and personal documents of the men and women who served. You can use Fold3 to find and augment records you may have already collected. You can also add records and pictures to a memorial you create for a veteran in your family. Fold3 helps you discover and share stories about everyday heroes and forgotten soldiers. Fold3 information is also available via Twitter, Facebook, and the Fold3 blog and other media. Depending on where you are when you set up your account, you access it in different ways. Note if you access Fold3 from a BYU library computer, you already have free access and are not asked to sign up or log in. If you're setting up your account from your own computer, do a Google search for Fold3 and select free membership or go directly to the URL fold3.com. Basic membership provides access to most Fold3 records. A premium membership, about $80 a year as I recall, is also available. You're asked to provide an email address and set up a password. To complete your registration, Fold3 sends a message to the email address you provide and asks you to verify your account by clicking on a link in that message. Follow the instructions provided by Fold3. They're relatively simple and easy to follow. Here is a typical home page for Fold3. Notice that there are several sections. The top section, highlighted here, is, nearly, is always the same. You can access the search, browse, memorial functions. You can discover a family military pass by inserting a first and last name and and deciding which records to search. The bottom half of the screen changes periodically. This screen shows new and updated collections. You also might get a screen that tells you what happened in this day and time in the military. Over on the right hand side is a section of items that actually scroll. These two change periodically. I recommend starting with the Fold3 Training Center to learn the basics, how to search, share, manage account settings, and more. Do this by clicking the Help tab and scrolling down the resulting screen to access information about searching, about filtering by categories and specific titles, about receiving notifications from Fold3 and particularly about using the browse function. Even better yet, click on the link to, Ancest to the Ancestry Academy to view a series of videos that explain Fold3 in detail. The Ancestry series provides an excellent introduction to most facets of Fold3. You must be signed into Ancestry to view them, but you'll be provided with a direct link via the introductory email sent to you when you sign up for Fold3. You can also access these videos from the Fold3 Training Center, as we've just talked about, and from the Fold3 homepage in the right-hand scroll, or from the URL that's provided here on the screen. The screen on the right of this page lists the video titles and the time it will take you to view each film. The heart of Fold3 is of course military records. Examples of some of the available records appear on the left of the screen. Everything from Medal of Honor recipients to deserters. Even the account book for the Deseret Storm Iron County Company. Surprise! Full 3 provides links to more than a few non-military records. Census records from 1860 to 1930 are there. 
Many city directories are available. You can also <clears throat> access the homestead records for Nebraska. A few vital records are also included. Texas birth death indexes, for example, and Massachusetts vital, vital records for Boston. I had a lot of fun with Project Blue Book, UFO investigation. Notice too that naturalization records are also available. You can browse records by war, by state. You can filter by time frame, whether you are looking for a document or a memorial page. You can filter by recently added records, by category, by publication, by branch of service, and so on. Take advantage of the flip-outs to narrow your search. For example, if I select Constitutional Convention records in the left-hand column, a column on the right opens and I can choose my option from that column. If I choose official records of the Constitutional Convention, I get a listing of some of the pages from that record. Now I can read the Constitutional Convention, convention Journals, Volumes 1 and 2, page by page, if I really want to. Fold 3 provides all kinds of browsing tools. Once you access an image, you are provided with this toolbar and with controls that allow you to refine the view. You can zoom in or out. You can adjust the brightness of the image. You can bookmark, annotate, save, download, print, share, even view a film strip where they are available. There are two major ways to search Fold3. One is just by doing a basic search. The other is by doing an advanced search. The advantages of the advanced search are provided on the screen for you. Remember that as usual, sometimes less is more. Start with bare bones and then add details if you don't get results. Need help searching? Again, Fold3 provides rather robust training. Note, however, one of the more frustrating search limitations. Some of the records do not know about first and last names. That's where the advanced search using keywords is especially helpful. In addition, not all of the records are dated. Some so searching for a particular time frame may not yield the results you are expecting either. Try them all. So here's my attempt to apply what I learned. I decided to search for Hazard Wilcox Jr., who was I was quite certain had served. And I thought his name was unusual. Hazard Wilcox Jr. How many people could be named Hazard? in addition to his father, of course, who was Hazard Wilcox Sr. Would you believe dozens? I've found and discarded several census records. For example, I knew that my Hazard lived around the early 1800s, so the 1860, 1860 census in Chattanooga probably didn't apply, nor did the 19. 100 to 1930 Erie, Pennsylvania records because he probably would have died by then. There were others that did not fit in the time frame. I knew also that he had lived in Connecticut. He could have moved to Michigan or Pennsylvania, but it's doubtful. I did finally find him in the War of 1812 Service Record Index where it's noted that he was a Tory of much notoriety. That would explain why the, why the Wilcox family moved to, Cal moved to Canada for several years and then returned to the United States. Here are some of the personal details for Hazard Wilcox. I find, found him in the right time frame and the right place. It's always good to analyze what you find. What did I learn? I learned that he served in the War of 1812, 
that he belonged to the Connecticut militia, that he belonged to the 83rd Regiment, which was Comstock's regiment. I learned that he was a volunteer. There wasn't a draft until 1862. I learned he was enlisted and discharged as a private, and I found out where the information came from. I even noticed that I can make corrections if I have them. My next search wasn't nearly as successful. I decided to search for an uncle, Bert Anthony Jones, who I knew served in the Second World War. I found nothing. I did have to remember that all records don't know about first and last names, and they're not all organized by date. So I tried searches without these details. I tried keywords, state, time frame, still nothing. I searched pages and pages of enlistment records for the years I thought applied. I found out that Jones is about 500 pages in each of these years, but still nothing, although I did find a couple of cousins. I know he's out there somewhere. I just couldn't find him. Here are a couple of the records, examples of records, that are included in Fold 3. These are both for cousins of Bert's. One is an application for a headstone that was made by a relative years after Earl Jones' death date, and here is a membership card for a cadet, cadet nurse from California that Bert was also related to. Still nothing about Bert himself. One possible solution is that I can collect, organize, and share everything I know about Bert. Fold 3 was designed to allow people to interact with what they find and add their own information and insights. To add something to Fold 3, you'll need at least a free membership account so that other site visitors will know where the information came from, and so you can come back later and update, remove, or manage the things you've added. Guess I'll have to create that memorial for Bert.